Hello and welcome to another SCL uh, car live cast between Fogbound Lake and Behe. So what do we have here? Oh, rather, well, I'm joined today by Ifo Hello. and the Master Chief. Hello again. Alright, yeah. Um, these are two extremely different like styles of teams in, if you look at it. like One is a very volt, vol momentum volter and heavy team from Fog and much more fatter team from Behe. Yeah, the quite the Umbreon Weezing core is one that I like. Yeah, with Gligar as well, so yeah. I guess the wish support goes for Gligar. Um, though I guess he doesn't have it's not spike stack because the Gligar is the sole uh, like rocker on this. Yeah, it has to be the rocker. Well to be, well, to be fair, we don't necessarily know that. It could be rocks plus spikes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it could be. But I mean, what you run rocks? I guess you you can give up U-turn, right? I guess you rocks, spikes, toxic EQ is probably okay. You can. Now, I'm I'm not sure that it is, but I I just wouldn't like say like on preview that it doesn't have to be spikes. It it could be that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I although yeah. I think it's it, it's it's interesting to note that they have both bike and Weezing R, which makes me wonder if it's just rocks and then dual removal. Or if they're running multiple coverage moves on Weezing. I think, or double I, think status. Weezing, I was gonna say Weezing could be double status. Toxic and Wisp is like generally quite like you know, sometimes quite difficult to switch into. We have an Empo uh, though. The Empo kind of covers the Weezing. Like, everything. <laughs> well um, actually so, so I guess if it is T spikes Weezing. Look at how good that will be because oh, you have T-Size yeah, Weezing plus you have knockoff true. Bike. Because right? so like yeah. uh, Bike is likely to be able to knock off like Raikou for instance and Crook is probably not Boots and Zero is definitely not Boots. So a lot of these mods are, are, are potentially T-Spikes weak. So I could see, if it's T-Spikes, I could see T-Spikes plus just there with Wish with Umbreon and knocking stuff with Bike. I can see that just winning the game on its own. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, well, the Talon is, does kind of, like, come in on Weezing and, and Fog, like, it did, you know, Weezing Ooh, can't but... really beat Talon in terms of, well, I mean, obviously you can stall out, like, T-Spikes has more PP than uh, Fog and all that, but still, like, I don't know. Well, there's that, and there's the possibility of it being Sludge Bomb Weezing, because, remember, remember it, it, it doesn't need to be uh, Fog on this team. It, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I agree. Yeah, Fog is taking a huge uh, amount of time uh, on preview. Oh, he always does that. He he always plays with a uh, low timer. Uh, okay. Just like me. Just like you. <laughs> yeah, just like I'm me. Just <laughs> now, to be Fair fair, point. I think it's. I, I I also think uh, I would like to highlight the um, Volcanian, which I think looks pretty good here. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, once it on gets in versus set, Talon. Right? It depends on the men's set, because the men's uh, could... Be, like, if, if it's special, then it's like... I mean, it, it'll at least tank some. The thing is, I don't know... Actually, I guess you, it's probably not Specs Volcanian on this team, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's going to be just... Well, I don't think it's going to be AV, right? Because you have AV bike, presumably, plus a Wish Umbreon. So... Yeah, then, like, Weezing plus Gligar is, like, physically defensive. So, like, it, it could even be Scarfolk. Oh. It's that's like, the team is always fairly slow. Yeah, that, that is a possibility. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm wondering if it's Terra Fairy, Terra Blast. Yeah, it definitely could be. Yeah, it could be, yeah. I, because if it, if it is, then that, that just goes really, like, in, in this game. Yeah, like, Mens doesn't work. Yeah, it's I mean, I, in that case, you, you outmuscle it though, because I mean, like, there's Raikou, there's. Uh, it depends on the Zoro, that could be specs. So, I mean, you, you, if you limit it to one trade, if it's if it is Sarah Fairy in the first case, then it's okay, but it has to be that set as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so a 
a, a Spex Sword looks good here, both uh, because of Hyper Voice, but also with Rocks Up, a Spex Focus Plus comes close to killing Bike. It might even outright kill. Mm -hmm. It depends on the Bike EVs. And it's also going to be a 2k on, on Umb. So that could potentially force like a Terra Poison very, uh, very um, early on. If this was um, the is, okay. Yeah. He's team. Yeah, oh, and oh, oh, that, was holy cow. that was a crit though. That was a crit. That was a crit, but. Yeah, but yeah. still, that did so much. Wow. It's 64? Let me, let, me, let me count that. Is that. That's got to be an offense. Is that. Hmm. It's offensive for sure, but I don't think it's specs though. It's definitely modest, but let's see. That Could that be. No, that looks to be. Uh, text or something because like max modest with a crit only does 56 max and that did 64. yeah six to, so, to, to both plus max oh yeah 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 uh you're right you're right uh yeah to bulkless it could do it might just be a max roll to bulkless actually okay that makes sense t-wave yeah. is okay. interesting that, that, okay so, Volk is, re is uh, revealed to be modest, uh, but not spexed. Okay. But now we just saw Thunder with Umbreon. It's funny. Um, the thing is also, Behe's, funny enough, doesn't have great ways to... like. I mean, you, the thing is, uh, if this Empo is knock, right, like, he doesn't really like switching into this Empo, because if you let your bike get knocked off, then Horo, like, if it's Specs especially, just really clicks Hyper Voice, like, for free, because there's no steal on Behe's team. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, he boots. went, he doubled, oh, that was a good double, yeah. Um, this one is uh, kind you... of annoying, but I assume you just hard bike. It's, oh, okay, he so this was, okay, he subbed. Top combine, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but That's why not just enough. go bike? What am I missing? Well, I mean, yeah. Now, now he knows. I think this is oh, this, oh wow. Wait, that did so much. Wait, is this? That's not AV bike. That is a boot spike. No, no, it's not. No, it, no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. Maybe it's something stupid like band. CB bike. <laughs> it actually probably could be. Oh shit, oh, yes, it could dude. be fog, fog wheezing and bike. You're right, you're right. Oh, he did use CB bike in the past. You're mm -hmm. right. I forgot about that. Oh shit. Dude, oh, then the Raikou that just... Is... The Raikou goes really in then. Yeah. That is... Oh, oh that's so sad. Especially with the... With the peral... Oh, okay. Oh. Did yeah. die? die? Oh, no, no, no. With the peral... Yeah, that was... Yeah, 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 that, 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 oh, that's bleak. It's, well, you could still just U-turn to break this up, and they're probably Skull plus Call Mine, right? So, oh, yeah, 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 it doesn't... Oh, he's spin? fun, okay. Oh, that, I mean, yeah, it could be just cool banned thing. on... It could, uh, to be fair, I don't think non band even breaks this I mean, I may be wrong, but non band doesn't seem to break this up. I don't know. No, it's, it, it is no, banned. No, you're right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think you can. Sc I yeah. would scald here personally. Actually, well, do you want? Actually, you don't want it to get burned if it's uh, synchronized Umbreon. Actually, to to be fair, it it could just be max attack, uh, non banned. That would still break the sub. Okay, uh, it's, it's dead matter. anyway. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not gonna find out. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how the heck does he beat this mod? Like, I don't. Hmm. Crazy thing is, I think Fog could just. Raw called here and be fine. Yeah. I think he kind of has to get rocks up to make some progress. Okay, I don't anyway. think you need to make that play if you're fog bound. I think I think I think, I think you can afford to just play it safe and win. Yeah, fair enough. And there we go. It seems to be dual hazard uh, Glagor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's probably competitive kill or drill, so you discourage defog. Or you don't. Maybe, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. yeah I I mean, but you do have bike and Gligar, so I, it actually could be competitive. Uh, I, I I could see that. I'm convinced that it is. I'm sort of perplexed that it didn't come out, honestly. There's so, so much damage, cool. though. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... it's How many roosts? Yeah, I mean, two roosts, and like, it's, it's gonna force a roost every time, but it's it's 
pretty low down on steamer options though. It's only four left. Now they roost again. Draco. 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 Okay. okay. I mean, it is special, like mixed men, or uh, like, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Mm. Weezing isn't going to like the hurricane. I mean, he can mm. just double down. Yeah, yes, of course. I don't think you want to risk hurricane as fogbound. Like, what do you I think? think you go... guys? You strange. Yeah, shoot? I think you go Empo, right? Because okay, he just uh, yeah, he, he does miss it. Life orb. Oh, life life orb. Orb. Okay. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Wow. <laughs> This is so cool. Yeah. That uh, T spike does go up, but okay. Did you... Oh my gosh! No! Oh, oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. No. This is I think tragic that, to be here. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. This kind of looks game over. Yeah. Okay. It very much does. Without the crit, it wasn't quite game over. It was still on, but okay. Well, th there is still one when Khan left, and that is the timer. Yes. Fogbound Lake yeah. has timed out multiple times before. I'm just, I'm just gonna put that out there, just in case. But this is a free roost, so I don't know if I understand. Yeah, it can't toxic or T-wave here. Right. Yes, and it's oh, that's, that's an, synchronized. Just add salt to the wounds. Big T-wave though, is that something? But that means that Raikou is completely free every time on Umbrian. Yeah, you're gonna need... Um, unless it's... You're gonna need Volk to go crazy somehow, but I just don't see it. You gotta double No, it. I mean, the, the, the Raikou as well, just like, you you just you can literally combine this turn. Are you suck? No, you okay, just yeah. scald. I mean, so you, you, can, yeah. you can literally scald. You, like, you can do anything. Burn. <laughs> okay, on you the immediate burn. burn. Yeah, yeah, this is like... Now you just instant. sub again, and you win. Yeah, you literally sub again, and you just... It's really unfortunate. I even yeah. care, okay. Uh, I mean, I just... to be fair, like, even just on preview, like, without any luck, this matchup seems super difficult. Yeah, yeah Raikou yeah. was, was always winning, I think. Yeah. As soon as you get yeah. the para or anything on the spike level. Yeah. He hasn't even brought out the Zor the Zorark. Which was yeah. heading on, on most. That we know of. Okay. Very... Holy. Yeah, GG is called. Yeah, yeah he does GG. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well that was <laughs> that was a game for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that was really interesting. Okay, so um, um, of uh, Raikou though. Yeah, that was yeah. Good Raikou. PU, by the way. Or PUBL. I mean, to be fair, though, like, if he had a regular Cyclazar, this Raikou was not really doing a, a whole lot. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, eh, it depends. Because you, you, you definitely get the para eventually, and after you get the para, it can be annoying. Or alternatively, if you get the burn and it is uh, not facade bike, then it can sub and keep the sub up. Um, versus bike. I feel like it so was it definitely for that bike. If it was CB, it could reason. have been like double edge. Yeah. Oh, it probably, probably was, double was edge. both. I think it, well, yeah, it probably was. Uh, but I'm but, I, but I'm thinking like suppose it was AV. Even then, AV could still be insufficient if it gets burnt and it is not AV facade, right? Yes. Then it just yeah, can't take I, this I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, yeah. We haven't seen really Raikou that much, so yeah. It was a yeah, pretty good showcase of it. Interesting. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Does Do we have any closing thoughts? Raikou is good? Yes, <laughs> Ra Raikou, Raikou is evidently good. <laughs> Okay, thank you everyone for attending and thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Alright, welcome back everybody to uh, another week of SVLRU coverage. Uh, week 8 in the books.
Uh, at this point, we've had uh, another five games they have come and gone, and we kind of know where these teams all stand with regards to the SEL playoff picture, too. So that'll be neat, kind of seeing how games play out for week nine, which we will talk about a little bit, uh, kind of at the end of this recap. But let's jump right into recapping. So first up, we have Philly Burn versus the Niche. The former RUTL versus up-and-comer, new guy Lime. Um, and Lime actually walked away with a win this week. Um, he brought a pretty kind of standard looking offense type thing. This is kind of what you expect from Lime at this point. He's had a lot of success with it during his tournament. Uh, his armor rouge, kind of his trusty pick, always been bringing it. It always seems to be performing for him. Whereas Feli has a little bit of a more unique-ish team. Uh, he brought like a sub three attacks Ente, which you don't really see a ton. Toxicity, just kind of in general, you don't see a ton. Um, but then obviously some like more relevant Feli picks, such as the, the Reggie Steel and stuff. So. Yeah, pretty cool stuff for both of them, and Lime did manage to kind of walk away with a win this week. Armor Rouge put in some work early. Um, Basket Legion was a neat non-choice set. I think it was weakness policy or something. I don't think it showed left user boots during the game, so we don't really know what it was, but I'm, I'm assuming weakness policy ended. Uh, got a surprise KO on Slowbro, um, and kind of just opened the door for Lime to kind of clean up with, with Dapos and everything. So, yeah, cool stuff there. Moving on, we have Kush versus Elodin. Kush has obviously not had the greatest tour, uh, and that continued this week. He lost again, and his record, I think at this point, is 0-8. I think he's lost every week, which is, you know, needless to say, very unfortunate for one of the more expensive buys in the, the tournament and you know, one of the more expensive buys in the pool, too. Uh, and then Elodin actually brought a pretty cool-looking team. Uh, you don't see Nine Tails of Lola that much, much less uh, the set that Elodin brought, which happened to be Calm Mind, Encore, Draining Kiss, Freeze Drive. Really cool stuff, and it really put in a lot of work for Suspicious Team. Uh, got Bish on like a Swords Dance turn with Encore, then started setting up Calm Minds, and at that point, it was kind of like, okay, it's a wrap, it's, it's GG here. There's also Terra Water, which was relevant. Um, so yeah, cool stuff from Elodin. Uh, and Koshi, he bought some cool stuff too. Um, namely, a Roar Volcanion, which was like pretty cool. It was Roar Throat, Roar Throat Spray. So it like phased a guy out, uh, got the Throat Spray proc, and then. You know, that was cool, but eventually got forced out. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of just like regular Volcanium, but worse, because you have to worry about getting Rocks Chip and so on and so forth. So, yeah, was not Kush's week, and Illidan uh, clutched up for the W. Next up, we have Franklin versus Rob Jr. This was one of the games, uh, at least I was part of, for the live cover. I don't actually know if we're going to put that one into this video. Uh, I think we will, but just in case we weren't, um, the kind of general consensus about this game was that Franklin had a very uh, somewhat uninspired performance. Uh, on preview, you know, he brought a you know, pretty standard looking hyper offense team, and it actually does look really good into Rob Jr.'s team. Um, Rob Jr.'s Slowbro, I think, ended up not being Rocky Helmet, so Mousehold was kind of free to click buttons whenever it got in on something slower, whether that be like the Crocodile or the Armor Rouge or, uh, you know, Noivern even, Slowbro. It, pop on was just really threatening. Uh, yeah, and Mega with Terra Ground is also like incredibly threatening. Um, with the Throat Spray proc up, it really killed everyone on the team, with the exception of Noivern, which just needs a little bit of chip, or a flinch or a crit or something like that. Um, Mew had a lot of like Mew actually put in a lot of work early, which we can kind of show. Uh, it's just like the first couple times. Uh, it was a really interesting new set for Franklin. From Franklin actually, it was Culbert Berry. Um, if you don't see too often, you'll see that proc right here, which is nice. Tick 43, easy tank. Uh, Crook forces Terra on turn two, which versus Hyper Offense is like, yeesh. You know, you really don't want to be expending the Terra so early versus a team with, you know, the, the, a team whose entire point is to just kind of run you over with gas, gas, gas. And, you know, Terra being one of the more valuable uh, defensive options in this gen, it just doesn't feel good using it on turn two. Um, this is an inexplicable Earth Power. This is kind of where the game starts to go wrong. Um, and that's a little funny saying it as it's like turn three, but even then, it's like, you know, there was really no reason to Earth Power there. I mean, Psychic Noise, you tear it away, the Dark type, everything else kind of doesn't want to come in on you. I mean, like what, you were going to throw in Slowbro to get Drain Kissed or Earth Power or something afterwards? It's like, you know, just an interesting turn from Franklin. Um, but eventually it kind of, you know, is indicative of kind of how this game went. So maybe unfortunate luck at a couple places. I think this river room, yeah, you just saw it right there, misses the gunk shot, and 
Uh, it doesn't get burned by the slow grow, but the second gum shaft doesn't kill. Even, I mean, the second shift gear in and of itself was a big reason, which is like, why did you go for that? But, you know, such is life, such is life. But yeah, Grab Jr. clutched up um, from a pretty unfavorable matchup, and yeah, secured the win for the week. Uh, and also notably, just a little bit of stand a sneak peek at the standings, uh, Rob Jr. actually locks in a positive record, uh, finishing this week with a win, which is a 5-3. And Franklin finishes uh, guaranteed a negative record for the second SEL in a row. He finishes this week at 3-5, and five, so even if he wins week 9, you know, that he's still a 4-5. and five. So, yeah, really surprising stuff from the kind of the RUTL and what a lot of people thought uh, would be, like, one of the strongest players in the in this pool. But, such is life. And shout-outs to Rob for punching up. Next up, we have Fogdown versus Behe. Um, Behe's team looks outdated. I'm, I'll just say that straight up. You have your Thunder, or I'm sorry, you have your Thunderous answers in Kilowatt and Rygar in a tier that banned Thunderous. So, yeah. A little interesting. Um, this was like a offensive cycles where I think was banded because it lost 1v1 versus an unboosted Raikou clicking Discharge, which is interesting. Uh... Yeah, and, and the Raikou kind of was the story of the game. An underrated pick from Fog, you don't really see Raikou a lot, but he put in a ton of work. He's a sub-CM set with a discharge installed. It's Terra Fairy. And I've just put in a huge amount of work versus BB's team. I mean, nothing really uh, could answer that. Um, the Kilowatt couldn't do it. Gligar couldn't do it. It's, you know, Scald. The cycles are, I just said, got 1v1. So, you know, Raikou really put in a ton of work. Um... And Fog actually did get uh, another cool set on this team, which is a Life Orb 3 Attacks Salamence. You don't really see Salamence off of Heavy Duty Boots, like, on anything. Um, you see Lumberry sometimes, maybe with Dragonlands, but Life Orb Attacker is certainly something that is new. And, uh, it, you know, kind of put in some value. It crit the Kilowatt on a switch and killed it from, like, basically full. It's a pretty cool set. Pretty cool set. And, uh, yeah. Fog with the, the W uh, on the week. And then, finally, we have Entro. Versus Stresh. Um, I'm just going to play this game out. And I will let y'all kind of see what happens. Uh, it's a very short game. I'll tell you that. Well, it, maybe not like actually short, but there's a whole bunch of turns where everything is kind of just like, you know, not relevant. The, the game is pretty much over. Um, this is Band Gapdos, which is pretty cool. No code Armor Rouge, but uh, in exchange, let's Crook get up rocks. Bring in Stresh's Gapdos. Uh, Tro goes to Noivern to kind of sponge the hit. Um, and yeah, the game is over now. <laughs> the Gyarados is in, the game is over now. This, this Mon is in, does not switch out, it clicks Dragon Dance once. I'll spoil it next turn, he clicks Dragon Dance again. There's a Super Fang here. The Gyarados clicks Ice Fang, kills the Noivern, and then it kills every other Mon on this team <laughs> with Earthquake and. Uh, all those stuff and it's it's notable to mention here actually well first let's see this turn play out because it, it'll make more sense but i'm yeah so the slow bro psychic noises is not killing gyarados very relevant because if you remember if you noticed uh intro actually clicked draco into super fang instead of super fang into draco which would have done more overall damage and guaranteed a psychic noise kill um so yeah since that didn't happen, the Gyarados actually had enough HP to live the, uh, what's it called? The Psy Noise. Uh, and then be able to, you know, claim the extra kill on Gapdos with also, like, kind of, uh, chipping the Slowbro. And then with the Terra Ground and the, you know, heightened attack boost, it, uh, yeah. It, it sweeps the, it sweeps the team. There's nothing Entro can do about it. Um, and I think the Wolf is here? Yeah. And then the game's dead, so. Such is, uh, such is life. What, what was that? 13 turns of just Gyarados domination. Um, and with that, I mean, that kind of concludes the, the games of the week. Um, Stress with this kind of, or, yeah, just uh, kind of unorthodox looking offense with Gyarados and Lucario and stuff, just working out versus Enter is kind of more traditional team. Um, and yeah, with that being said, we can do a little bit of a quick recap about everyone's standings. Uh, Lime and the machines in general, I think, have a record of 6-2, and two, uh, finishing out week 8. Lime himself is 5-2, and two, had to take a seat on the bench for one week, where Denial came in with one versus Franklin, so yeah, they are at 6-2. and two. Uh, I will just kind of yeah say that Lime is at 6-2, and two, just general categorization for the team. 
Family Burn, I think is at 5 and 3. We have a lot of people kind of chilling at that 5 and 3 mark. Uh, Elodin being another one of those guys, chilling at, or I'm sorry, Elodin's at 4 and 4. He's split, so he'll be fighting for week 9 to end with a positive record. Uh, he'll be fighting to, you know, try and secure that positive record, or he'll end negative on the season, which is also, you know, such as life. Kush is, you know, 0 and 8. His team in general is like 1 and 7 in this slot, so unfortunate. Rest in peace. Rob Jr. Uh, sitting at a very clean 5 and 3, entering into week 9. Franklin sitting at a 3 and 5. Behe, I think, also uh, sitting at a 3 and 5 record. Uh, or no, actually, Behe's at 2 and 6, I believe. Yeah, Behe's at 2 and 6. Um, Fogland is at 5 and 3. Very cool, very cool. Uh, Stretch is at 7 and 1. And then Entro is at, uh, and his, his team, I think, is, is still sitting at uh, 1 and 7, similar to, to the boxes in their situation. So, yeah. With that being said, let's take a quick look at some of the usage stats. Cricket Isle taking the first lot this week. Uh, yet again, I think he was first last week, too. Um, and the kind of quagsire praise that you know, was happening last week as has passed. You can see zero quags brought this week, so... That's cool. Um, it seems the stats have normalized out. So, yeah. Uh, with that being said, I think that's kind of all the recapping we have this week. And we'll come back next week. It'll be the last week, week nine. And um, then we'll kind of look at the playoff picture too and who to expect in playoffs and those matchups and stuff. So, yeah. Until then, thank you for watching. Make sure to you know, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And we will catch you later. Peace.